for the audio or you can even watch back Giving players all the props or put them on blast We don't give no hot cakes, only talk facts We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is the time No, we no stopping us No, you know that we can hold it down Shout out to my man Sammy, got it off the ground And to all the listeners tuned in right now Got debates, analysis, and speculation This is sports talk for the new generation You know where to find us, got a reputation Sick podcast, your number one sports destination We're giving all our devotion Riding high on this wave of emotion Going all out, yeah, cause this is to listen to the sick podcast the eye test with pierre mcguire and jimmy murphy the stanley cup winning colorado avalanche 
And after 22 years, Raymond Mark! The sickest NHL podcast. Brought to you by TCS Customs and Logistics. Moving pieces, delivering peace of mind. It's going to be sick. Welcome to another edition of the Eye Test here on the Sick Podcast Network. I'm your host, Jimmy Murphy. He's the host as well, Pierre McGuire. And we are, Pierre, I hate talking about coach firings, but we're going to have to talk about today. Uh, tough news for Don Granado out of Buffalo. Uh, he looked like he was going to keep his job. They did announce that he would speak with Kevin Adams later this week. But sometimes that can be a kiss of death uh, when, when they say you're safe, uh, as you know. Um, and now he is out of a job along with the assistant and video coach, uh, but on to join us later on, probably around 430 to talk about the Buffalo Sabres, the firing and what may be next for that team is former Buffalo Sabres goalie and anal- analyst, uh, Marty Baron will be joining us here on the eye test. I look forward to talking to him, but Pierre, your thoughts right away, uh, on what happened in Buffalo this morning. Well, they underachieved as a team. The expectation was created last off season where I think Kevin Adams and and Don all both said we're going to be a much better team, and they really weren't. The one thing that I would say, and I know we've talked about it on the eye test, Buffalo is a town in a city where the team has to have an identity. Mm -hmm. You know, you watch the football team play, and they call it Bill's Mafia. The fans have an amazing amount of pride in the way the team plays, and they're very, very competitive. Now, do they get to the Super Bowl and win? No, they haven't won a Super Bowl. But are they relevant and are they close mm-hmm. to being a championship team? The answer is yes, and they have a certain identity that they play with. Well, the same owner that owns the Buffalo Bills owns the Buffalo Sabres. You can't say the same kind of success has happened between the two teams. No. no. And so the one thing that I would point out is I don't think it's a team that has an identity and they need to get an identity. And Buffalo is a hardcore, tough town. And I, I remember coaching so many games in the old odd. Yep. There was an identity when you went into the odd. There was an identity when you went into Chef's for a pregame meal downtown. There was an identity when you went to Gabriel's Gate post game and had wings because nobody chartered out in those days. Yep. It was The identity was tough. Yeah. You think Buffalo Sabres are tough? No, no, no. Haven't made the playoffs 13 years, Pierre. And this is what? I I didn't even see the number. I saw the stat earlier. What number coach are we going on in that span? It's something like seven or eight, maybe? Well, if you, I mean, if you count Teddy Nolan, Danny Bilesma, you start doing the math on all the coaches, Lindy Ruff, you start doing the math on all the guys that have been around. um, You're probably looking at seven or eight. Yeah, I, you know what? I'll pull it up right now for us, Pierre, just to get the facts. Ralph Kruger. Ralph Kruger's another one that comes to mind. Phil Housley's another one that comes to mind. Yep. So you start with Lindy Ruff. He was yep. he was going 2013. Ron Ralston replaced him then. And then Ted Nolan takes over. Okay. And like you said, Dan Bilesmer, Phil Housley, Ralph Kruger, and Donnie Granado. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven coaches. Seven coaches. Yep. That's, I mean, I don't know how you you build and maintain stability when the bench is a rotating door there. I mean, it's just they got to find the right guy this time, Pierre, because I don't – I mean, I would think that Kevin Adams knows that this is – you know, he's got to get it right this time or he could be the one going out the door next. See, I, I think they made a bit of a mistake, and this is nothing against Kevin. This is not Kevin – I don't think it's Kevin's fault. I think they panicked when they let Jason Bottrell and Randy Sexton go. Mm-hmm. I think they panicked. Um, and when they made that decision to go with Kevin, it changed the the direction of the team. Mm-hmm. Um, and they let him go. People forget this. It's really an important. I, I'm kind of surprised at the media, actually. We'll ask Marty Baronis. Yep. Nobody talks about it. They let him go. The whole staff, like 10 days before the NHL draft. Yeah. In 2020, which was one of the best drafts we've had in the league since 2003 in terms of depth. Yep. And they had a lot of scouts go too, didn't they? But that's what I'm saying. I think there were 17 or 18 people that were let go. Going into one of the most important. Now, to be fair, they drafted Quinn. Quinn was part of that draft. Yeah. And Paterka was part of that draft too. So they got two good players at the top end of the draft. 
But after that, I don't think anybody's paid any dividends um, yeah. from what you know should have been a, a really good draft for them. Yeah, so we will get more into that when we bring Marty Baron on at 4.30. Uh, but looking back at last night, Pierre, you and I were texting a lot about all the different games going on. <laughs> not just games. I mean, not just crazy playoff implication games. Also some history made as well with Connor McDavid hitting the 100 assist plateau. I mean, let's let's start there and then we'll get into the playoff uh, scenario games that took place and, and the effect it has on games tonight. Um, look, this guy, I mean, you know, we can go on and on about all the different accolades he gets, but this has to be at the top right now of something he's done, Pierre, because what, only two other people have done it in NHL history? Well, what, Gretzky's done it, right? Lemieux's Gretzky? done it. Oh, so three. Gretzky, Lemieux, and Bobby Orr. Bobby Orr. So th th I was going to go you know, yeah. the, the first two and then Bobby, obviously. Uh, yeah, <laughs> pretty, pretty amazing pretty company. Amazing. Um, so what it tells you is one – He's on a good – he's an elite player, obviously, but he's on a good team too. Yes. Offensively, offensively, he's on a good team. Guys can finish it. Can we stop with the Zach Hyman can't play? Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Can we, can we stop with that too? Oh, my gosh. Just, I mean, guy's got almost 60 goals, 54 yeah. goals. And it's but, not just because of who he's around. That's he how – hey, hey, listen, I know people want to go after him, but just be fair. Yeah. He was scoring when McDavid was I hurt. I know. <laughs> So it's, just just be fair. Just yeah. if you made a mistake, it's okay. Just say I made it. You know what? I misread the player. He's exactly. better than I thought. Yep. There's no you shame know? in that. There's no shame, shame in that. We yeah. all make mistakes every day. Like yeah. there are certain teams that I think are lead pipes inch to win. And yep. I've told told you, I said, Jimmy, I was wrong there, man. <laughs> they, they were <laughs> right. Good. Like, did you think the? I'll give you an example. In your heart of hearts. Mm -hmm. Did you honestly think the Boston Bruins would only have 16 shots on goal against Washington last night? No. No chance. No chance. No chance. Well, I was wrong there. And and did I did did you honestly think that Charlie Lindgren would have the month that he's had? Or the no, month no because I, I repeatedly told you, Jimmy, he's hit the wall. He's yep. out of gas. Yeah. And he he's keeps bouncing like he's back. He's hit the wall. He keeps bouncing back. He's, he he's energized he's right him. now. He's so great. he's probably playing on fumes, but it doesn't matter. He got the job done last night. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're really not it, listen, we're the Bruins. There were no testy guys. shots there, really. But the, Bru the Bruins weren't good last night. Yeah. But what I would say, I can say this to you, because okay. I was texting you during the game. Montreal, Detroit. That game was awesome. That was amazing yeah. hockey. Yeah. It was great. You know, you know, part of why it was good? There were uh -huh. mistakes. There were mistakes. Yep. There were mistakes. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So whatever their mistakes, it's good hockey. Yeah. Um, and then the skill gets to shine. I mean, Kane tried his best to take that game over. The Brinkett tried his best to take that game over. Mm -hmm. Larkin tried his best yep. to take the game over. But Lucas Raymond, he did take the game over. Oh, gosh. And how about Ooh. the play by Gossip Spirit? I was I just going to go there. I'm so glad you brought that up. Off the blue line. Yeah, no, that no, no, keep talking about it. Yeah, that was amazing. That, that was, was awesome. Amazing. That saved the season. It so. saved the season, literally. No, I love it. And hey, that's – look, I almost want to see – not just because I, I I grew up a Red Wings fan. I like watching it. But just I want to see them in the playoffs because they're fun to watch. It'll be fun hockey. I don't know how much that hockey will win in the playoffs because you have to tighten up a little more defensively. But, I mean, these guys are the heart attack kids, and they're, it, it's a fun roller coaster on with them right now. I'll tell you that. So Simon Edvinson played a great game. He had one egregious turnover that leads mm -hmm. to, to the puck going to the back of that. You see his response afterwards. I know. I wonder if he's going to get a bill from Stevie White. You broke that stick unnecessarily. <laughs> You're taking 300 bucks out of your paycheck. No, I'm only joking. You know, I'm only joking. Yeah. Him. But um, I loved his response. I loved how passionate he was. He was yeah. angry. You he called him a here. This kid's going to be a winner. Oh, superstar. He's going to yep. be a superstar yep. player in the league. He's yep. really good. And what did we think of Lane Hudson? I liked it. A couple mistakes. Well, but other than that, I thought he, look, he, looked, he like looked the it. part. He looked the part. I'll tell you that. How could you not like it? I the one thing I said, and I said this to our friend Tony Marino, uh, Marinero last night on his show. There are a couple of things I didn't like. One, and, and this is I don't know if Stefan Robida was following orders, if he was just doing it on his own. He changes the defense for the Canes. Too many times he got caught out against Larkin, and he's yeah. not he's not ready for That's that. Me that too. He, yeah, time. no, he, he's not yeah. Jimmy, he's not ready for that. I'm just no. telling you, he's not ready for that. So that's on the coach has to protect him a little bit 
Not a lot. Just get them into a little yeah. bit of a bubble. And then the other thing I didn't like, and this is on Marty, and you know what I think of Marty. I'm a huge fan. Yep. But he got caught last night. I know he's on the road. It doesn't matter. you got to figure it out. You can't have your fourth line on the ice in back-to-back shifts against Larkin, you know, against Raymond, and mm-hmm. against the Brinkett. You, you can't. Yeah. You, you can't. And I he know. did. Yeah. So – I know they, they're coaching on emotion now, and I know they're coaching with a lot of energy, but you also have to have some vision. You know what I'm saying? And that's just – look, I'm nitpicking, but I'm being realistic too. It's not all peaches and cream. Sometimes it's going to be a little nasty too. Yeah, for sure. And then look uh, – I want to go back to that uh, Boston-Washington game too, Pierre. And like – look, you've been there as a coach, and you've been in management. Do teams – but look, I want to I want to throw this out there right now. By no means do I think the Bruins were throwing a game or they were trying to lose. I don't think that. But I wonder if they didn't mind as much as maybe they would have a month ago. Is that fair to say? I, I think I that didn't sense the 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 there was no, urgency. no, there was an urgency. No purpose to them. They they are they are a team that thrives on hard work and effort and a lunch pail mentality. And that was not – it was there in spades from Washington. And you had to know it was going to be, given their playoff situation. That was not there at all compared to what I saw against Pittsburgh on Saturday. Oh, that's fair. Like, I think that's more than fair. And, um, you know, if they lose last night and they lose tonight, they play Toronto instead of Tampa. And they match up better against Toronto. I, I don't, that's you think no Ottawa, so Do you think Ottawa was going to go into Boston tonight and – Beat them up, like run them around. I don't I think they're gonna run them around, but I don't think they're gonna roll over. I don't they think they weren't real good. Last, I mean, they were okay last night against New York. They weren't great. Yeah, but they got some. I problems. mean, I don't know. I, I don't know what. I don't know if they want to go in there and you know, you know, stick a dagger in the eye of the Bruins just to be mean, or if they're just gonna go in and say, okay, it's our last game of the year. Let's just. You know, I'm not in that locker place. room. I would want to. If I'm Ottawa, I want to go in there and say, screw this. We're gonna we're gonna screw things up for them. You know. My team did that. Yeah, team I know. Did that did. In oh, that road trip, right? But we went in. We went into Boston, Hartford into Boston. And oh, that's where you throw Sutter nuts. Yeah, we yeah. we beat them, and Brian was really upset. Sutter, um, who I always respected so much, I have so much respect for the Sutter as a Sutters as a family. Mm-hmm. Um, but what was interesting, instead of them having to play Washington. They had to play Buffalo because we knocked them out in the last day of the season. And that was a series that had the May Day goal, the Brad May goal. May Day. That knocked knocked the Bruins out. And that was a pretty good Bruins team. They swept them. They swept the Bruins. Oh, don't worry. I remember. I I actually went over to Europe and was scouting um, when that series started. But I remember the May Day call. And it was before the internet. (laughs) You know what I mean? We didn't have that kind of stuff. But it was all over. Uh, the International Tribune Review. I used to read it cover to cover every day. It was all over the newspaper. You know something? I re- I remember last year during that series against the uh, Panthers. And the Panthers start coming back in that series, Pierre. And then it's game seven. And I, for some reason, that came into my head was that team, that 92-93 Bruins team. Because you're right. They they finished the top division. They might have even been atop the league, if I'm not mistaken. It might have been like second. I don't know. But, you know, they looked like a team that was going to go yeah. deep. Oh, yeah, they had a good team. See ya. Just like that. And, and it, you know, it had that feeling again last year uh, with that Bruins team. So. so it's funny, though. We're talking about Buffalo, right? Mm-hmm. Brad May, character, yep. crazy, Great. useful player, right? Mm-hmm. Rob Ray, character, oh. crazy, hard to play against. Nobody liked going in there. You know, Dominic Kashik. You know, you start looking at some of the guys that were around. They had an identity. They had an unbelievable identity. Mm-hmm. Well, let's just, you know, I'm going to pull the lineup right now. You go, know, I mean, go, they, to the, they, go to the 93-94 Buffalo Sabres. No, this is a, no I'm going 92-93 when they, when they beat them, when they beat the Bruins. Okay, that was go, go ahead. Yep. So, of course, they had great players in LaFontaine, McGillney, Powerchuk, Andrew Chuck. But you look at some of the gritty guys here. Bob Sweeney, actually was on that team, uh, was a Bruin as well. Randy Wood, Brad May, Peter Sabota, Dave Hannon, 
Grant Ledyard, Gord Donnelly, Bob Corkum. Grant Ledyard was savage, mean. Yep. Tough. One of the nicest guys you'll ever meet away from the rink. He's a scout. Exactly. It's always a good guy. <laughs> Bob Ray, Keith Carney, yeah. Bob Berry, uh, Matthew Barnaby played a couple games. Greg Brown, our good friend from Boston College. Uh, Barney was a little bit lo loose too, right? Matthew Barnaby. <laughs> yep, Matthew crazy. Barnaby was just starting to come into the league. Yep. Darren Cooper and uh, Dominic Hasek were the goalies. But then actually Grant Fuhr was the goalie of record in that game, the Mayday game. Yeah, I remember that. Wow. So they had they had some grit for sure. They had an identity, and that's exactly what they need to find now. So, Pierre, I, I don't want to keep going back to that because we are going to talk with Marty, but one thing I wonder, and I'll bring it up with him, is there's a guy uh, that lost his job this year, and, uh, you know, he's coaching in St. Louis, coached them to a Stanley Cup. He's Baruby. got an identity. Yeah, Baruby would be a good fit for identity for sure. I think I don't think he'll have just one team. No. What, what I find, what I think will be interesting, does David Carl leave Denver? Right. Well, it's interesting because yesterday, before this happened, he was uh, he was on Spitting Chicklets, I guess. I saw it on Twitter, and he said um, he has no desire to leave. But I don't know, like, okay. does what happened this morning change that? Does he get a phone call that changes? Well, uh, there, that so changes? Buffalo's tied in heavily with USA Hockey. Mm -hmm. They've got a lot of analytics people in their front office, and they've got a lot of people in their front office that are tied into USA Hockey. I'm just using them as an example. I, I think there'll be other, you know, what's going to happen in Columbus with management? Right with yeah. management, I don't, you know, our, our good friend Mark Recchi's coaching there. I, I don't want anything bad to happen there. I, know. I think I think they've played hard, and when you consider the Fantilli injury and the Boone Jenner injury, um, and haphazard goaltending that's what i'd call it i don't know what you'd call it but haphazard i still think columbus is on the right track with with pascal vincent and mark recchi there i do i think right. it's above they got to make some changes if you ask me well, they're, they're gonna i think that i think people know that um but i think you're right I, I do i think you're right you know what happens if a team gets knocked out early and an owner just gets really angry yep you yep. know an owner just says I'm mad. Here's here's something too, Pierre. I want to ask you not to cut you off there, but just in terms of uh, the coaching changes. So Granado just signed an extension. It was set to start next year. Yeah, that's okay. I know. So what I just want to ask you, and, and it's, I noticed this a lot more with the firings this year, that a lot of these guys that have been losing their jobs had just signed extensions. Does that not matter anymore? No, I don't. Uh, it's a little no, more cap, so they they don't count scouts, general managers, senior vice presidents, coaches. They don't count on the cap. And owners don't mind paying a guy I, to. I mean, some else. of them do, but some of them do. But more times than not, a lot of these guys are going to have an offset because they're going to get other jobs. Yeah. And so when you get another job, you get an offset. So it's not as punitive for the owner that fired the the coach. But, no, but to be fair, it's what you're asking is legit. Okay. Some owners would take that and say no. Yeah. You know, I think there's an owner that's that uncomfortable. An owner that, there's an owner that resides in Buffalo that doesn't own the Sabres that I think <laughs> might say no. No, 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 no. <laughs> not go down that path. Yeah. But anyhow, um, mm. let's look around though. Look at the games tonight, Pierre. So we get Florida is still in it. I wonder. I haven't. I haven't been on to check. Uh, do you? If you're the coach, do you do you play your guys or you rest them? Yeah, well, they, play they play Toronto. They play Toronto. No. What, 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 with a chance to score 70. I mean, what do you think goes on in that game? I, I don't know. It's like, do, what do the coaches want to do? That's the dilemma you face at this time of year. Do you want the division? Do you want to take the chance with you guys uh, getting hurt potentially? What do you do? You know what's I interesting? Mean, We're talking about contracts and employees. Billy Zito just signed a big extension. I saw that. And, yep. and with a job promotion. Yeah. With a promo job promotion. Mm -hmm. So I think whatever Mr. Zito wants, Paul Maurice will do. That's right. And by the way, Carter Verhage coming back for them. Uh, uh, so, so, you know, it's amazing. You, you do it and you look at it. Carter Verhage was actually drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Wow. He was actually drafted by the Toronto Maple Leafs. Go look it up, Jimmy. I'm telling you, I'm not making it up. Go look yep. it up. And then he up. goes to then he goes to Tampa, wins a cup, becomes an unrestricted free agent. He signs in Florida. 
and he's hit the mother load. I mean, good for him. I love those stories. I think I actually remember you, Pierre, way back when he was with Tampa, telling me about him. Like, watch, watch this kid, Jimmy. He's got, he's got some spunk to him. Like, I, I saw I, him. I told yeah, me about I, him. Like you said, he's got a motor to him. I was at practice. I want to say at their old practice facility, and I was watching him in practice. And I, I think it was to Doc Emmerich. I'm pretty sure it was Doc. It might have been Gordon Miller, but I think it was Doc. I said. I don't know where this guy came from, but I'm just telling you right now, like this is a different player than what I saw when he was in junior. Yeah. And he's at another level. Like his motor doesn't stop. Yeah. And he's you could see he was starting to really get into it. Yep. And then all of a sudden, you know, it just he exploded. And then he right to the other side of that rivalry, too. I mean, Florida saw him enough, so they knew they said, Hey, they knew this, exactly. This they knew 100 percent they knew. Yep. Uh, by the way, yep, you're right, Pierre. Round three, 82nd overall by the Toronto Maple Leafs in the 2013 draft. Carter it's Hagen. amazing. It's just an amazing thing. I mean, it is he's, a heck, he's a heck of a player. He's a heck yep. of a player. He's a good player. And by the way, I'll uh, I'll just tell you, it looks like Florida is going to go all out with the lines. They got Tarasenko playing, Barkov, Reinhardt on the first line, Verhage, Bennett, Kachuk on the second line. Uh, yeah, they're going all out. So they're going for that division. Did you say Bennett? Yep. Oh, they're going. So Toronto better buckle up. They're they're playing tonight. Oh yeah, we we've been we've been touting about Bennett the way he goes out there. He's a complete uh, disturber. You know that. They're they're really playing cool. to win tonight, Florida. Yep. They are, and they you know what they want to embrace. They want to embrace it. Give us Tamper in the first round. Yeah, we'll take care of them again. <laughs> Good stuff. Um, so yeah, we will be joined shortly. We hope, uh, I know he's doing some NHL network stuff right now. Marty Baron is joining us. Um, Pierre, anything else you took from last night looking around the league that struck you? Um, and it's well, I hate you. to beat it up. I, you know, I hate to beat it up, but San Jose, you get pulverized by Edmonton. I know. I mean, I get they got nothing to play for right now. They've secured. Yeah, them. they do. They have jobs to play They've for. They've got right? jobs. Right. Well, I'm saying in terms of standings and the lottery. Oh, I get that, yeah. yeah. I, I just feel really bad for David Quinn. I really do. Me too. He's a really good coach. Yep. And he's a really good person. I know. Uh, just, that's thankless. Like, that's You can't get paid enough to be throttled like they get throttled almost every game. Yeah, it's been at least seven or eight games where they've lost by five goals or more. I'm pretty sure. I'd like to know how many times they've given up seven or more goals in a game. I can pull that up for you. Um, other team I wanted to give credit to, New York Islanders clinch a playoff spot. Yeah, good for Patty. Patty, I don't know if I thought that was happening, Pierre. You know what? You know, it was a really cool – neither did I, Jimmy. I don't think the roster's good enough. I still don't, but they found a way. Varlamov obviously is a huge story there. Um, what I found interesting last no Noah Dobson last night, um, you know, obviously one of the most improved players, if not the most improved player mm -hmm. at his position in the league. But uh, the fact that Kyle McLean scored a goal against the New Jersey Devils, I just <laughs> love that for Johnny Mack. Johnny McLean's such a good coach, such a good hockey person, and his son's playing for him now with the Islanders. And can you imagine how many games that kid went through in New Jersey when his dad was playing? Oh, yeah. So for him to score against the Devils, I just thought that was – I was so happy for him. And for them to seal clinch that spot. Yeah, for them to clinch the playoff spot, I thought that was good. I thought and then good. credit to the Penguins. You know, they're still hanging on by a thread, but they're still alive, and they bounce back from a tough loss against the Bruins, and they beat the Predators. So credit well, to them. I knew well, the Predators have everything secured. They have to hold for so much divine intervention tonight. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Because their game against the Islanders tomorrow won't count for anything. You know, if Washington wins in Philly tonight, it's all over. That's it. That's it doesn't all matter. Over everything. It's over. So, they've. when's the last time Pittsburgh ever cheered for Philly? I know, right? When's the last time? I'm just looking as I'm trying to count this up for you, period. 11. Wow. That's what I'm telling you, Jimmy. Oh. And listen, this is for all the people in San Jose. And I know you you guys watch, and you've been really faithful for a lot of it since the eye test started. 12 we times. Have, 12 times really? they've given up seven goals or more. 12 times? Yeah. Think about that. Yep. You think you're 20, just going to fix that like that? 20 times, six or more. Okay. Yeah. I, I, I have nothing against any of it. except no, we want that market to How are you going to fix that so quick? Yeah, 
it's going to take time. It's going to take time. Tell the truth. Just I mean, say even Pellegrini, he's not fixing your defense. You know? No, but Matt, if you have Mack and Celebrini, Will Smith, and Eklund, mm -hmm. you got the start of something really good. You do? The, you do I'm telling you. You need some. The problem you're going to have is you're going to have to insulate those guys because people are going to come after them like you can't believe. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough here. Uh, but looking ahead to tonight, so look, that game's going to mean a lot. Toronto and the Panthers. Uh, Washington, Philly, and, and Detroit, Montreal. I mean, those are yep. those are the games that really matter. I know you care about Boston. I get it. I, yeah. But you, you play who you play in the playoffs. That's, exactly. That's what I want to get to. Because I had the fans ask me all day, who do you prefer? Who do you want? And I'm kind of like, you know what? I don't know. Just at the point where, like, whoever. If last year didn't teach you that, that you don't wish for an opponent, no. you just take who you get. You don't. It's okay for us, the fans, to think that way, but the players cannot think that way because that is not a way to go into a first round. You got to win sixteen games. That's all you got to think about. Yep. you got to win sixteen games in four series. That's what you got to do. Well, one man who has played in the Stanley Cup playoffs uh, and in the NHL, and now he does a great job uh, with Buffalo Sabres coverage, and you can also catch him on TSN on NHL Network. He's joining us here on the eye test on the Sick Podcast Network. Marty Bigon. Bonjour, mon ami. Bonjour, bonjour, monsieur. <laughs> Comment ça va? <laughs> yeah. Oh, boy. You must be driving to Clarence, New York. No, actually, Pierre, I don't live in Clarence anymore. I moved to the south towns of Buffalo. So I'm in East Aurora, not far from the Bill Stadium. But actually, right now, I'm driving to your old stumping ground to a nine channel nine court. I'm just oh, taking the Cowan exit right now. I'll pull over so I don't drive, but that's uh, going to do a little leaf panel tonight. So that's what I got. Yeah, leaves in Florida. And Florida's dressing a big artillery tonight, Marty. They're dressing. They're going to win the game tonight, Florida. Yep. Well, I, I yes, I would sense so. Like, I mean, there's a chance those two teams may meet in the first round. So why not send a message right now? And I know Florida doesn't have Eggblad and Verhage, but you bring the, the heaviness back, and actually. you send the message in the regular season. Yeah. But no, actually, Verhage's going to play tonight, Marty. They got well, Verhage's playing tonight. Well, then yeah. that's good for them. I didn't even yeah. see that. I see when you drive and you've got the Buffalo news <laughs> that's happened today, you, you forget some things. Yeah, kind of a busy day, Jimmy, huh? Jimmy, you know what was so cool about this? We had Marty on to talk about Buffalo. You see what happens when you're a Sabre and you played on teams that had identity? Mm -hmm. so Marty just said, well, let's send a message. Yep. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Well, I mean, I almost got my head caved in by Ray Emery trying to send a message. That didn't work for me, but that works for others. So that's okay. <laughs> God bless him. God bless him. Ray. But that's something Pierre and I were touching on, and maybe you can elaborate on, Marty. You know, it seems like a while since this team has truly had an identity. And, you know, there's been a lot of changes, obviously, in the front office, the coaching, uh, players. Uh, how important is it for them to bring somebody in with that next hire to establish that and then stick with it? Well, I, I think that, you know, for the Buffalo Sabres, it's 13 years now that they haven't made the playoffs. And mm -hmm. it's not on Kevin Adams all 13 years. It's not on Don Granado all 13 years. It's not even on... The Pagulas on 13 years because, you know, they got the club and then they're trying to build something. And look, they're the owner. They don't play the game. They try to find the right people to put in place. So it's very hard to pinpoint on one person alone the stretch. But the fan base is the same fan base. The people yeah. that buy the tickets are the same people that buy the tickets that cheer on this team. That's who it's been hard on trying mm -hmm. to support the team. And look, they've been great. They, they were some of the best fans around the National Hockey League. Well, and great. last year was fun and exciting. And they missed the playoffs by one point. And this year was supposed to be the next step. You saw some great development done. Mm -hmm. Tage Thompson, 47 goals last year. Go yep. from wing to center. Uh, Alex Duck, Jeff Skinner. They had career years last year. Dylan Cousin, Jack Quinn, J.J. Patoka. There's some really good parts. And Don Granado did a great job developing these parts. But when you, you fall short of expectation and you have that pressure, you got to get it right. And I think that's what Kevin Adams is saying now is he's got to make a move so that the next step is happening. You 
don't want to wait another two years before you take that next step. Yeah. But I think the next step's about the identity the team has. And when Marty played for the Buffalo Sabres, there was an identity there, Jimmy. There was. There was an identity there. I and hope we didn't I'm lose sure him. We'll, I'm sure he's efforting to get back. He'll get back yeah. to us. You know, yeah. person. But they don't have that identity right now. No, they don't. They don't. And I love that he brought that up, too, about the uh, fight. <laughs> that was classic. You don't want to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with uh, Ray Emery. That takes the some late, guts. The late Ray Emery was one tough hombre. Yeah. I'll tell you that. Wow. He was a tough guy. He was. Um, the one thing I'm interested to, uh, you, you mentioned the connections to USA Hockey, and you mentioned – well, we'll we'll talk about it after. I think we got Marty Let me back. Just get to Marty here when we get him back. Martin. You continue, Pierre. Marty, you there? You got us? No. No, no sound. We'll get it worked out. We'll get it worked out. Look at – I kind of know the neighbor he's in. I, I worked there for 11 years. Um, <laughs> It's uh, there's some cell phone problems around that area where he's driving into now. It's kind of weird, but there are some cell phone issues there. Um, nice. But I, I just think that for Buffalo in particular, Jimmy, they got to identify the importance for character players. Mm -hmm. They need guys. So you look at Boston. People know when you play Boston, you're gonna, it's going to be a rough night. Like they're going to play you hard. Yep. Every night. They might not be the best. They weren't last night. They're going to still play you hard. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And, uh, you know, you look at that roster up here, there are some good core players there that have skill and I think could fit into the whole identity thing as well. Uh, but it's going to be his job to do that. The one thing I like, though, if I'm the GM, if I'm Adams, is he's got picks to work with and he's got some skill. He's got some good young players that maybe he has to go out and get more of a veteran guy that has that identity we're looking for. But I think we got Marty back. Let's see. Are oh, he's still in the green room? So what I'm going to I'm going to say, Marty, I'm going to ask him straight up. What's the identity of the Buffalo Sabres right now? Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. think he'll be able to answer it to you. No, that's, that's what. Yeah. Do you have your answer then? Yep. Yeah. Um, and that's crazy how he does Leafs panel as well. Doing both sides of that rivalry. I like it. I kind of did that with Montreal. <laughs> you know what they call that in the business? Sleeping with the enemy. Yeah. <laughs> hey, if the enemy pays the bills. So you got to do it. <laughs> it's the way it is. <laughs> oh, that's good, Jimmy. You know, um, no, we'll talk to him about that. But, I mean, you got to think, Pierre, if you're looking, I'm going to pull up their roster now because I'd like to look at – let's pull it up in cap friendly too. Yeah. Um, I mean, are you building around Tage Thompson? We agree, and and Rasmus. Yes. Those are the two. Well, those no, are he talked players. about Quinn, Quinn and Paterka are really good players. Oh, I think Dylan, Dylan Cousins is a real good player. Um, you know, I think it's not the top six forwards that are the problem there. I think they it's need more the depth, the depth players. Right. You know, like I said, when you had May and you had Ray, and you had those guys running around. It was hard. Yep. Well, it was not a fun place to be. Friday Friday night, the 8 o'clock starts in Buffalo, and I think Marty played in a couple of them. Those were about as tough a building as you could go into on a Friday night. Oh, yeah. in the show. Yeah, that, 8 o'clock Friday night starts were tough there. Even when they weren't having a good season, Pierre. No, it, it was no fun. Records get thrown out the door. It was, it was a wild place. Yeah. I mean, people were on top of you. The odd had a distinct advantage for the home team. The boards were funny. The glass was funny. The rink was small. I mean, they came to play every night. Yeah. I, I always remember Buffalo – and Lindy could – I wish Lindy Ruff, we could get him on at some point. Yeah. Lindy could speak to that. I mean, he was part of it when it was mayhem, mm -hmm. you know, both as a player and as a coach. Okay. I'm interested that you brought him up because his name has been uh, everywhere today. Will they bring him back in some capacity? I don't know. Is there is there bad blood there? Is it is that kind of is that relationship sale? But he could be a good guy to bring Brack into the fold. In, if you're trying a, to build a so gritty activity. I've been telling you this for a long time. I how they let Michael Pecka go to New York from Rochester, I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea. I'm gonna ask Biron this too. I have yeah. no idea. The other name I keep hearing appear today, uh, I'm just telling you what's been flying around yeah, yeah. in the world is uh Seth Abbott. 
So Seth coaches in Rochester. He's done a good job. Remember I told you about USA Hockey? Yeah. Part of USA yeah. Hockey. Yeah. So, you know, there's a connection there. They called him up a couple times. Eat, yeah, yeah. Uh, he, and, he, and he did a nice job when he was called. No, he did. He did a nice job. You know, I I remember when, I remember when Seth Appert was coaching at RPI and it wasn't going so good. Yeah. You know, yeah. so. But here's the thing. So we, we're, we're saying names like this, and I know you mentioned Carl, but I mean – I guess, I guess Kevin Adams flat out said today in the presser just about an hour ago, I want somebody with experience. Well, then, okay, that limits the pool then. Yep. You know, is it NHL experience or is it coaching experience? He wants NHL coaching well, then, experience. So you, got, so you got Baruby. Yep. Are they going to open the door for Joel Quenville to come back? He's ha I mean, he'd have to be an instant candidate if the okay, NHL. So if they open the door, you want you want that. He should be your first guy you call. Yep. You know, but I don't know if they do that. I don't know if Joel would even go there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know one guy that I'd call right away. He's coaching in Utica, New York, Kevin Deneen. Yeah. Ooh, talk about identity. You want to get an identity, you want to get an identity yeah. with your team? He's Bar Barubi would provide that instantaneously. Yes. Yes. You know, he would. Um, I just, like you said, Barubi, no, he's got team. Sport. Okay, let me ask you this. I'm just asking the question. Does the door ever open again for Mike Babcock in the NHL? I don't know. Probably not, but I'm just wondering. It, it might be too fresh right now. So, I mean, you start looking around. Who are the, who are the guys that are going to – I'll give you one because he was a former Sabre, Scotty Arneal. Mm -hmm. He's coaching in Winnipeg right now. I mean, yep. he knows how to coach. Yeah. I mean, so – you know, everybody throws out all these names. I, I, my Rolodex goes deeper. Yeah. You, you know, you want experience? Because I didn't say that. I mean, he, the general manager there said it. Yeah. So if you really want experience, there are guys out there. I'm just tossing this out there, Pierre. I'm not. I just want to ask you, have you heard anything on Rod Brindamore? Is he, is he a lot to go back to Carolina? Because he is not signed yet. I No, I... Uh, I have a hard time. Believing. One identity. There you go. Yeah, but I have a hard time believing he would leave there. I just, I think, yeah, I feel like, I almost feel like th that's where he's going to be for the rest. I don't want to. I don't want to go into the silly season yeah. like that. I mean, he's got a. He's about to, you know, coach a team that should have a long run in the playoffs. I think they will too. They should. Think, yeah. You know, I'll give. So, I don't know. They're playing Columbus tonight. You you have those rosters in front of you. I don't have those in rosters in front of you. Is Bradley Nadeau going to play tonight? I will tell you right now. Uh, is Jackson Blake going to play tonight? Let's see. Hurricanes. So here's how they're reading right now, according to Daily Faceoff. You get Tara Vinan, Drury, Nakus. Bradley Nadeau is in. He's uh, going to be centered with Kuznetsov at center. Jesper Fast on the right. And you got Comtois, Kokanyemi, Nason, and then Lemieux, Martinuk, and Jackson Blake will be in there. So they took Aho out of the lineup. That's the one name I haven't heard to say, right? Yeah. Aho's out of the lineup. I haven't heard that. Mm -hmm. Gensel's not. I didn't hear Gensel's name. No, I think they're resting him. So so this is an opportunity. I, I'm just saying, like, I think Jack, I still can't believe. I don't know if Pittsburgh didn't ask for him or not. I don't know. I have no idea. I didn't mm -hmm. think they would trade Bradley Nadeau, but uh, did they even ask for uh, Jackson Blake? We, in I don't Pittsburgh? know. Did they yeah. even? I, yeah. I don't I know. Would, I would hope they would. They're having trouble with Marty. We might have to get him another no, time. That's, you know, Marty was great. Marty's such a good yeah. guy. The fact you know that he what? what we should do, Pierre, since we are pushing up on quarter of five here, why don't we open up to questions? Just yeah, so let's do the questions and tell Marty, tell him in the studio, tell Marty thanks, and we will definitely have him on it another time, and we really appreciate the time that yeah. he took. To this get is going to be an ongoing story. It's not like it's Yeah, going it's going not going away. The story's not going yeah. away. Uh, no. One thing I want to say before we go to questions too, Pierre, somebody was asking me about Ryan Leonard. Um can and the question was, and I, I think I know the answer, but I didn't want to answer it until you said it. He can come in. He doesn't have to get in to a regular season game, right? He can come in for the playoffs, just like Charlie McAvoy did in 2017. Okay, I didn't know if that changed at all. 
Um, so that's something to watch, well, maybe. Or, yeah, if they make it, but if they, yeah. but if they don't make it, you could still go on an ATO to Hershey, right? And then sign a pro deal after the season's over. Yeah. Okay. So that's something we'll keep an eye on. A lot of people are asking me that. They wanted me to ask you because no, I hear you. A great question. That, hey, that's a great question. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, he's legit. Oh yeah. He's legit, he's, man. And he's going to fit right in with what they're doing. So, in Washington. The Washington, Washington, Ross Mahoney and Danny Brooks and the guys in Washington that drafted him, he's legit. That yeah. kid. By the way, we have Marty back. So let's go to Marty. We got him? Yeah. Marty, here. here we yeah, go. Yeah. Wait, wait. <laughs> the Canadian cell towers are, are spying on Pierre McGuire. They want to know what he's saying. That's they, my phone went on SOS mode. They, like it's never happened, but they're all spying in right now. Okay, I need to ask you one question, Marty. This is important. What's the identity of the Buffalo Sabers? Okay, uh, well, they were a scoring team that did not score this year, so that's the identity of the Buffalo Sabers: a talented scoring team that did not meet their expectation and now you're searching for that identity again because it's it's not there anymore it was there last year it's it wasn't there this year so what i remember so much going into buffalo in the old odd i know you were there and friday nights at eight o'clock you if you were the visiting team you had to buckle your bonnet up because if you didn't you weren't going to last for long and you know what i'm talking about marty I think the Buffalo Sabres have to get back to some of that. Uh, yes, they do have to get back to some of that. The, the league is different. I mean, you'll never have Rob Ray, Matt Barnaby, Brad May, Bobby Bugner. I mean, call all of them. They all were wearing boxer's robe in the dressing room. Jim Pizzitelli used to hand out boxer's robe to all of them. And uh, he made one for Dominic Ashik as an honorary boxer because Dom was so good. But you're never going to get that again. Like, right? that's not the game anymore. But you know what they, how the Sabres punched you in the mouth last year? Is they scored. And there was like, they would wear those black and red uniforms at home last year, the goat heads. And they scored six and seven goals a game with those. It was like, Try to stop them. Nobody could stop them, right? And I think the Jack Wynn injury this year affected that because yeah, then all of a sudden absolutely. you didn't have that secondary line. It was Thompson, Tuck Skinner, top line, Cousins, Paterka, Quinn, second line. Then you had middle step with somebody. No Quinn affected the whole dynamic. So part of the identity is you score and you can come in wave. They lost that without Quinn. Look at Quinn. He scored... What is it? Nine goals in 26 or 27 games this year. He was on pace for over 30. Put that to Thompson, 30 and whatever. Like that would be high scoring, but the Sabres missed that. I yeah. agree. I totally agree. Marty, what about just, you know, echoing what Pierre said, just about making it a tough place to play again. How much do you think that Adams is going to focus on bringing in some guys with grit and, and maybe even a coach that kind of, has that identity himself that's known as a gritty player when he played. I mean, I, I think of like playing for George, John Tortorella with the New York Rangers, mm -hmm. and we were tough to play against, but we had guys like Dan Girardi and Ryan Callahan and Brendan Dubinsky, and it, it, they weren't going to run you out of the building, but they blocked shots and they defended, and that to me is the part you have to be hard to play against that way. And yes, look, I, I, mean, I see it from a goalie's point of view, and I love playing for Torx as a goalie. It was easy. The game was easy. There was four guys laying in front of shots in front of me, <laughs> but that's the that's the tough to play against mentality yep. that I think the Sabres, and they can do that. Like If you roll out Dallin, Power, Sam Rolson on the back end, and mm -hmm. you have tall legs, and they can be physical too. Like how hard? Like playing against Victor Hedman, he's not gonna hit you in the in the parking lot, but he's yeah. gonna make life really hard on you on the ice because mm -hmm. of his reach, his length. That's the toughness that I think the Sabers can bring with the roster that they have. Yes, they need to round it up with a few pieces, but they have some of those pieces, like Alex Tuck. Man, the guy could be like one of the best power forward in the league. He's strong. He can skate. He can shoot. Like, that's where you can get your toughness from. How much do they talk about Michael Pekka in Buffalo? 
Well, the fan base is talking Michael Pekka, but like Kevin Adams did his media availability at 3.30 this afternoon and said NHL experience, coaching NHL experience is going to be a must. Like Michael Pekka has never been a head coach, right? Never in the pro. He was an assistant coach uh, with the Rochester Americans after doing the COVID uh, taxi squad year with Pierre La Peter LaViolette in, in Washington. Mm -hmm. He was really good in his role in Rochester. He's really good in his role with the New York Rangers. But I, if it was two years ago, I think, okay, look at Michael Pekka. Now you can't go from Housley, Kruger, Don Granado, Michael Pekka. Like it just doesn't, you need somebody that has more head coaching NHL experience to, uh, to, to just give it a little bit more panache. That's what I said today, a little panache. That's a perfect word for it. That's a perfect word for it, Mike. Who was the best coach you played for, Marty? You just mentioned Tortorella. Would that be the guy? Was that you? Um, I had I had four coaches really in my career. I started with Lindy Ruff in Buffalo. Then I went to John Stevens in Philly, Scott Gordon with the Islanders, and then Torts in New York, and then a little bit of Alain Vigneault, and then I retired. I said, I'm done. Vigneault <laughs> and I, we went way back to juniors. He was my coach in juniors a little bit. We didn't agree on things. Great guy. I love Vigneault. Like, I would see him off the ice. Great guy. Yeah. Coach to player, we didn't agree on things. So yeah. he's not. But I say, for me, I always liked a tough coach, a coach yeah. that laid it on the line. Lindy was like that. John Tortorello was like that. I was older with Torts, so I understood it a little bit more. I remember Torts one time in the video session. I gave up a goal on a two on one. Dustin Bufflin, Atlanta Trashers, came down the right wing, went oh, over gosh. my glove, and Torts stopped the video session, looked over to me, and goes, Gotta stop that. I can't play you if you don't make that save. And then I walked out with him and he goes, you understand what I mean? I'm like, absolutely. Yeah. And yes, I got to make that save. And That's if I awesome. don't give you that save, don't play me. And he goes, I like it. Like, I love that. That's the kind of coach I like. I know it's not for everybody, but that's the type of coach I like. So I look at the Sabres, and I'm like, I have five or six guys on my list, right? I have the, you know, Lindy Ruff is going to be a guy that people are going to talk about because he coached Buffalo, and he's a little bit that tough coach, too. I have the Jared Gallant type of coach. I have a Todd McClellan type of coach. I have a Guy Boucher type of coach, like, you know, a, a structured guy that could be tough, like ruffle some feathers. And then I put Joel Quinville on my list because I'm like, eh, you know what? Like, yeah. that could be the, the the swinging for the fence type of situation. Maybe the Sabres find themselves in sin. This is the guy we need. Yep. Hey, you better talk to Craig Berube. I do have him on my list, too. Um, he's on top of my list. And then I'm like, okay, Craig Berube. And then, well, if Mike Sullivan becomes available, uh, he'd be on top of my list. I know him well from my time with the Rangers. So yeah, there's. See now I have seven names on my list. That's what happens. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. All right, one final one for you, Marty. Uh, in terms of Kevin Adams, I, I have to imagine the rope is a little less right now from ownership. Is that fair to say? Yeah, I think every GM that makes a coaching change sees their like life expectancy shorten a little bit, right? Rob mm -hmm. Blake with the uh, LA Kings, he makes the coaching change all of a sudden. Whoop, like the focus is on you. What did you do to make the team better? Mm -hmm. Is it just on the coach? Um, everybody that has made coaching changes is going to put be put under the uh, the spotlight. I think it's the it's a fair case for Kevin Adams, uh, but. Look, he's built a pretty good young roster that needs to develop. Find the right guy now to continue the work of Don Granado, and you're fine. You could be here 15 years as the GM. Like, Darcy Regeer was here 15 years as a GM. Like, there's been so much turnaround of late that they want stable grounds, and if he gets that right, he could be here for a long time. All right. Good stuff. Well, Marty, we appreciate you taking the time and the hard effort just to get back on. We appreciate it. Be safe out there, and we're going to get you on down the line again, I hope. I, I hope so, and I usually pride myself on being technological savvy, and when it goes bad, I get so frustrated, like uh, I want to punch my steering wheel. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. Pierre was excited to have you on as well again, too. Oh. I know you guys yeah, couldn't see you guys. Pierre, you know what? Puffy called me the first time. That's why the phone went black, because it <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff, Pike. Be safe, my man. See you later, Marty.
Merci beaucoup. That's Marty uh, Baron joining us here. Uh, he's a great guy. guy. I was talking about is one of the directors at TSN. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's actually a good hockey guy too. Very good. Nice. Yeah, he's a great guy. I remember I got to know Marty uh, Baron back 2014 during that Habs run uh, to the conference final. He was he was with TSN and we were always hanging out after games. So Goal just a really up. good guy. Great heart. His first NHL start was against the Ottawa Senators. Mm -hmm. He lost. Uh, uh oh. <laughs> I, was, I was coaching in that game. Okay. Wow. In, in the old odd. Nice. Did you ever go? You probably did some uh, some shows on TSM with him, eh? With Marty, oh, lots. I like yeah. Marty a lot. I think Marty's yeah. a really good hockey person. Um, and I love what he said because he said something that's really smart. He watches a game from a goaltender perspective. Yes. And it is really right. different. But if you really want to learn, you have to hear from how everybody in the game sees it. Yeah. And I've always, I always had really fascinating discussions with him, and I enjoyed those a lot. A lot. That is, you know, and I never really thought about it that way, Pierre. I mean, okay, so if I'm a GM and I'm, you know, I'm looking into a new coach that I want to hire, that has to be a thing you do, huh? You go to a goalie. How do you see our team uh, from your view? What does it look like? I mean, how yeah. hard is it to, to goaltend behind us? Yeah. Yeah, that's really yeah. insightful. I like that. So we, we've had some really good talks about different fundamentals in the game. I, I've always liked him. I, I, he used to sit near me a lot because he was a backup, especially with the Rangers when Lundquist was just ripping it up. Exactly. And we would have these great talks when I wasn't on the air. You know, I just pushed my mute button and I talked to her. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty funny. It was good. <laughs> Yeah, he, he uh, always seems like he'd be. I, I mean, I obviously never played. But no, he's a good teammate, good person. Great teammate. That's the only reason I brought up Clarence, New York, is he lived there and he used to tell me, I built a house in Clarence. I like it there so much. And so one time I call him the king of Clarence. I said, <laughs> Well, you're putting up a fence so nobody can come in unless you approve it. Well, listen, I want to tell you, we're going to go to questions quick. It's going to be a quick one. I apologize, but we're going to, we got to talk about our great sponsor that we've welcomed on uh, TCS Customs and Logistics. Uh, these guys, man, I'm so happy to have them on really good hockey people. Uh, they unlock the full potential of your shipping operation with TCS customs and logistics from around the corner to around the world, flatbeds to air freight customs clearance to drawback consulting. TCS is a one-stop shop for all things, transport, moving pieces and delivering a peace of mind for no obligation customs or freight quote, contact them at sick podcast at shiptcs.com again that's sick podcast at shiptcs.com as we said yesterday they work with nhlers they love the game they're psyched to be on this and we're psyched to have them here so uh really looking forward to working with them this season and hopefully in the coming season as well yeah really appreciate it thanks a lot to everybody involved with uh, tcs all right let's get right to questions here because i know you've got some there all right alex evanoski who do you think makes the last playoff spot out east my heart says the Red Wings. My brain says I think the Caps do it because they can control their destiny. That's the one thing I think they got going for them over the rest. I'm going to pass because I'm such a softy. All right. I'm going to pass. And, and we want to make clear, too, that the, just because I say the Caps doesn't mean I'm cheering for the Caps. No. I'm just giving you one I'm, I'm going to pass because I just don't want to dip my toe in that pool. That's all right. That's all right, Pierre. That's what I'm here for. Just throw me right I in. Know. I'm throwing you <laughs> in the deep end. I'll throw you a life jacket. Just, just give me those little, uh, what do they call them? The floaties. <laughs> <laughs> Next question. A to Z me. Savard or Matheson? If you had to keep just one vet D-man, who would it be? Habs have to open up some spaces for the young guys coming. My vote would go to Savard for many reasons. I would go the other way. I'm with Pierre. Pierre said it yesterday. Extend Matheson. I'm 100% on board. I would, I would go with Matheson. And I think the world of David Savard. Watching him last night, especially early on in the game, what he did for Lane Hudson, I thought was outstanding. Uh, but I would keep Mike just because of the way he skates. All right. Next question. Vincent Yoel. Thanks again, gentlemen. You guys are my favorite hockey show. Well, thank you. We appreciate the support. Yeah. Pierre, are there unlimited call-ups during the playoffs? Yep. No waiver wire. What yep. about new contracts? No, nope. all good. Yep. No, no issues. All right. And we're going to see a lot of those black aces coming up soon. Yep. All right. Next question. Mark Allred. Good afternoon. Appreciate the daily knowledge and insight. 
Good afternoon to you as well, Mark. Regardless of who the Bruins play in the first round, do you both feel they have what it takes to move on to the second round? I'd say yes. I'd say yes. Yeah. And I think it's right between the pipes. Yep. All right. Next question. Marvin Matthews, Pierre and Jimmy, who are your favorite underrated players when you were younger? As a Habs fan, mine was Doug Riseborough. That's a great call. Um, oh, that would be easy. Go ahead, Jimmy. I'm going to go with Randy Burridge. Remember the stump? Randy Stump oh, Burridge. I'm going to go with Mario Tremblay. Ooh, there you go. I think Mario's the only 18-year-old in those days that made the NA, like played for Montreal. Okay. He was okay. tough as nails, man. Good call. Good Fearless call. Fearless guy, tough as nails. Awesome. All he right. Good. Really Next good. Next question. Alex Evanowski, what's your opinion on Babcock, the guy can coach? I think the Blue Jacket thing got overblown. That's just me. I'm not going to give my opinion on the Blue Jacket thing because yeah. I don't know the ins and outs. I wasn't there. No. I disagree with – I agree, though, with you, Alex. He can coach. And, you know, yeah. if he can get back in, he'll – I do think he would be in demand if they allow him back in. I just don't know when that will be. Yeah, I don't know when that will be either, but I would say this Mike knows how to coach. I mean, oh, I've been around Mike in a lot of high – Stanley Cup finals, mm -hmm. Olympic gold medal games. I've been with Mike a lot. Um, Mike can coach. Yeah. All right, next question. Danko, are three assistant coaches too many for MSL, Marty St. Louis, that is, now that he's got more head coaching experience in Montreal? Think he brings in his own guy this offseason. Thanks, guys. I, I don't do. Think I think, go ahead, Jim. I, I think that happens. Yeah. I, I don't think three is too many because it's kind of the way the league is going. Mm -hmm. But uh, I do think he tinkers with his staff a little bit. I don't think he's going to tinker with it a ton, but I yep. do think he'll tinker with it a little bit. All right, next question. 87 Eagles. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My question for you today is why doesn't Davis, the goalie for Denver, have a contract? He looks good enough for a look, in my opinion. I, I think he could within a week or two. We, we talked about that yesterday, yeah. I think it was, right, yeah. Jimmy? Yeah. Um, yeah, no, Matt Davis was tremendous throughout from game one against uh, UMass Amherst all the way to the end against Boston College. Yeah. He was a story for Denver. There's no question. He's the most outstanding player of, of the Frozen Four, and he's the most outstanding player I saw in the NCAA tournament. Yep. So I wouldn't be surprised if you got a contract. The problem is there have been a lot of goalies that have come out of Denver and there haven't been a lot that have made it. Mm -hmm. You know, John is size Gr an issue too. I think size is a bit of an issue with him. John Jim Graham Jim made it. Johnny Graham would made it, you know, but you, you start to look at there haven't been too many that made like Magnus Krona hasn't made it yet. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you start looking at there just haven't been a lot. All right, next question. Alex Evanowski, at some point, Columbus, New Jersey, Buffalo, Detroit, and Ottawa are going to be playoff staples out east. It's just a matter of when. Too much young talent. It's a circle of life in the NHL. Well, we kind of thought that was coming this year on some of those guys. I agree, though. They've got a lot of young talent, but it's not all about that. As we just discussed with Marty and Pierre and I said earlier, Pierre, I mean, I think you you got to surround that talent with the right people. That's Leadership, the key. leadership matters organizational standards matter, coaching matters, management matters, salary cap control matters. There are going to be some issues with some of those teams that you just talked about, Alex. There are going to be some issues with those teams because they're going to be capped out because yeah. they, they overpaid young players coming out of entry level and they paid them on future prognostication rather than real numbers. Um, and I don't know how that script flipped as quickly as it did the agents took charge and really did a number on some of these teams. Yep. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out long term, though. It really will be. All right, next question. Arbor, do you agree with the man on man system? Most teams seem to use hybrid or zone. I hear commentators saying players are confused, especially Anderson. I'm not smart enough to notice the difference. Yeah, you are. Well, there's there's a lot of subtle differences within zone coverage. You know, some people play straight man to man below the hash marks. Other people play box and one, which is a dice system, where everybody's in their own area and zone. Um, it's hard to play a zone now, especially because of how well players can shoot the puck. So there's certain elements or certain parts of the ice where you do have to play straight man, and there are others where you can play support mode um and so every coach has his own ideology a lot of it depends on how mobile your defensemen are it really matters and also how smart your center icemen are straight man to man is hard to do but if you have three if you have real good skating defense and four real good centers you can do it 
you can do it and do it real well. Pierre, this is just coming over the wire, and I just got the press release two minutes ago from the Boston Bruins. Jack Edwards, the voice of the Boston Bruins, announces his retirement at the end of this season, uh, effective immediately. So they will have the games in the first round, and then all the games go to national networks after round one. So round one will be the last games that Jack does play-by-play -play for Ness. And look, I know there's been a lot said about Jack. He's had a lot of issues health-wise. Um, you know, we've spoken about it before. They're trying to get to the bottom of it. They haven't yet, unfortunately. And people can say what they want about him, but uh, he's had a great career, uh, and I just want to wish him the best uh, from us, Pierre. I'm sure you join me there. Uh, after 19 years as the Boston Bruins play-by-play -play broadcaster, Jack Edwards is calling it a career. Classic by you, Jimmy. Yeah. Strong statement and a good, appropriate statement. Nobody wants to see Jack struggle with his health, and yeah. uh, we're wishing him all the best from the eye test for sure. 100%. All right. Next question. Chris Blue Shirts. Hey, guys, question from you. I remember when Yashin was traded for Eisenman. Go ahead. Go ahead. Any, any other trades that nearly happened on Pierre remembers that well. Great show. Let's go, Rangers. So I'm going gonna, gonna to tell, tell you the genesis of the Yashin for Eisenman. I had just left Hartford and gone to work in Ottawa. I was working for Randy Sexton and Ray Shiro and our ownership group at the time. And, um, you know, we had a really good group of young players. We really did. This was the coming out party for Daniel Alfredson, obviously Alexi Ash, and we had Alexander Dagg. We had a really energized Lance Pitt. Like, we had some good players, some really good young players. Um, and we we had played a preseason game. I want to say it was against Toronto down in Belleville. And we were in the car coming back, and I had gotten a call the night before from Scotty Bowman in Detroit saying, would you guys be interested in, in Iserman? <laughs> and and they were trying to get Iserman's attention, I think, because obviously they had yet to get to a final. They hadn't won, and he was an important player. So I think they were trying to get him on board with what they were trying to do there. And so we had Brad Marsh in the car with us, and Brad played with Steve in Detroit. So we asked marshy about Iserman, and he goes oh gosh would he ever be good here coming back to ottawa he's from the p and all this stuff it was really good and so i don't know how it got out but it eventually got leaked out in the papers and and they backed off but i can tell you right now ottawa was going to do it oh, yeah. ottawa, ottawa was going to do it i'm just telling you i was there yeah. we we're going to do it and and they to their credit they got cold feet i don't blame them yeah, an iconic player. Yeah, yeah. but the, the discussions definitely happen. Hundred percent, they happen. Yeah, we talk about we can talk about that to Scotty tomorrow. Oh <laughs> no, we're going to talk about the <laughs> promise I made to Scotty was we're going to talk about the playoffs. Yeah, we are going to talk about the playoffs, and and just and on that note, for our listeners and viewers, we excited to announce that Mr. Scotty Bowman will be joining us again on the eye test tomorrow to tee up the Stanley Cup playoffs. Maybe some playoff memories of his own would be nice, yeah, too. Uh, he's got plenty to talk about. Uh, but, yeah, we're really thrilled to have Scotty come back on. Uh, always a pleasure. Always a treat talking to him. Um, it, you know, it was funny, Pierre, when I when I went over to my family's to uh, see my new baby niece. And I, I was talking to uh, my mom and her boyfriend just about, hey, I got Scotty coming on again. And he was all excited. And they, ju they just couldn't believe how sharp he still is and just uh... – you know, how, how good he is to talk to. Uh, he's just, he's unique. You know, I played golf this morning, early this morning with a bunch of men from Michigan. And they said, how could a coach of Scotty Bowman be asking me this? Are you kidding me? Like he's, he's not only the best coach that ever lived in hockey, he's probably the best coach that ever lived in any sport. And I, I'm talking, you know, if you think Vince Lombardi was the best, if you think Don Trula was the best, if you thought Joe Torre was the best, Casey Stang, I don't care. Whomever you thought was the best, Dick Williams in baseball, I don't care. Go, you know, uh, anywhere you want. The truth is nobody's won more than Scotty Bowman. Yeah. no, Nobody. I mean, Red Arback was unbelievable, uh, but more as a manager than as a coach. Yeah. You know, so. And, and, and the other thing that I love about Scotty, and, and this is not to knock any of those guys you just listed, is he stood the test of time and he five still does. decades five decades he still does 
five like, decades. He talks hockey. He he doesn't just you know sit in the past and tell us about the past. He talks about the present, and and his views adapt to the present, and, and that never stops. And that's what's so amazing about Scotty to me, Pierre. So I'm looking forward to that. Wait, Don't miss it tomorrow. Scotty Bowman join us to tee up the 2024 20, Stanley Cup playoffs here on the Eye Test. We're going to take one more question. We'll have to close it out because i got to catch a train to the garden, get in there for the Bruins Senators. Uh, and what will that question be? Let's see. The Puck Bunnies. I see your Ramon shirt, Jimmy, which leads to my question for two of you. What kind of music do you listen to? Well, I'll just tell you, I listen to everything. I really don't have like one genre that I'm specific to. I love everything. I listen to country music a lot. And Bruce Springsteen a lot, and a band, oh, that, there you go, and a, band that a lot of people probably wouldn't remember, Southside Johnny and the Asbury Duke. So oh, yeah, I know that, know that very well. So but I'm more, that. I'm more country. I'm in. You know who I listen to so much now? It's Luke Combs. Okay. I just think, my son and I went to a concert. It was a Jason Aldean concert in um, in New York at MSG. And they said we want to bring on this new up and coming star. His name is Luke Combs. And that guy came on, and as great as Jason Aldean is, he's really good. This Luke Combs was up there. He shredded it. He was so good. I was like, oh, my gosh, this guy's good. You know what? It's real quick, same thing happened to me. And now he didn't get as big as Luke Combs. But uh, I go to a, a concert with uh, Mitch Melnick uh, many years ago up in Montreal with Mitch Melnick, Andy Bennett. And uh, it was uh, this old punk band from New York City. But I was excited to see them. I mean, I'd never seen them called the New York Dolls. And they come up. They were good. But before that, we were already blown away by the opener. It's so crazy when an opening act can kind of steal the thunder before the, the main act. Like, it's yeah. rare that you see that. But when it happens, you're like, wow, we just saw something. Like, this person's going somewhere. And the name of the band was Black Joe Lewis and the Honey Band. So for blues and funk lovers out there, I highly suggest it checking them out. But yeah, that's great. We'll have some more music discussion. I'm glad they asked that question. Thanks, Puck. Very good. And Pierre, have you seen the boss in, in concert? Oh yeah. Many times. Oh, yeah. Great. Eh? All right. Good yeah, stuff. No, it's, it's pretty impressive. Um, He's amazing. I, I mean, I, the first time I saw him was probably in the, probably the mid seventies. Yeah. And it was, it was really special. You know, dare I, dare I say he's a Scotty Bowman of rock. Uh, I think you could. I think you could say. I think you could say that. Lasted. I mean, I think you could say that. Yeah. You know, I think you could. I don't think that's a stretch. I mean, think about how many generations. He's, oh, I know. Well, so he's definitely he's seventies, eighties, nineties, two thousand, two thousand twenty. So he's there. You go. Five five decades. Yep. Pretty well. Well, that's cheers. good. Way to go, Jimmy. Yeah. All right, the boss. There we go, and we'll have the boss of hockey. Scotty Bowman join us tomorrow here on the eye test. We want to thank our guest, Marty Baron. Thank our great production crew, especially for the work they did getting us back in touch with Marty there. Thanks to you in the comments section with all your great questions. TCS. TCS. Yep. Thank you. Don't worry, don't worry, buddy. And thank you to our new sponsor, TCS. Really psyched to have them on board. And hopefully one of these times I'll be up in Montreal soon. We'll do another remote. I can meet the crew there. I've already talked to Michael Maislin on the phone. It seems like a wonderful guy. So looking forward to that. But until then, he's Pierre McGuire. I'm Jimmy Murphy. This has been another edition of the Eye Test on the Sick Podcast Network. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the Eye Test with Pierre McGuire and Jimmy Murphy on YouTube, Facebook, Google Play, and Apple Podcasts. Brought to you by TCS Customs and Logistics. Moving pieces, delivering peace of mind.